today and we can uh, study the Word of, of God together. I'm so glad to, uh, uh, to be able to do this. My health is sufficient so that I can uh, be here before you today. And I hope that this is something that will bless your heart. Uh, we are continuing our study of the deity of Jesus Christ. Basically, we're talking about Christology. We're talking about what does the Bible have to say about who Jesus is. There's a, a song that we sing from time to time that is meaningful to me. Uh, it, the words are, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. It's more than just a story. He is the King of glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. And I want you to, for the next half hour, put things aside, open up your Bible, and let's study together. Let's look into what, does, what did Jesus say about himself and what does the Bible uh, teach us. I would like to go to prayer and that many things we can pray about. Certainly we need to pray um, uh, about the state of our uh, country, of the United States, and uh, really all of the world. It's, we, we live in troubled times, which the Bible talks about is in, that in the last days, perilous times would come. That's just the way it's going to be. I believe we are in the last days. Dear friend, if you have not made your calling and election sure, if you're watching this, uh, th this video and you have not yet truly trusted in Jesus to save you, to wash you from your sins, to give you a brand new life, then I encourage you to do that. Do so now. If your life is a mess, the Lord can straighten it up. If your life is uh, confused, the Lord can shine light. If you just don't know which way to turn, turn to Jesus. He'll be the one who will help you. And let's study together uh, this and every Wednesday, Lord willing. I do let me tell you that uh, I expect next Wednesday to be back uh, timely with you. Uh, I will be facing additional surgeries on my foot soon. I don't know exactly. It's not scheduled just yet. Um, my my podiatrist tells me this is not elective surgery. This is uh, something that's needful in order for that foot to be, um, well, for me to keep having my foot. I, I do want to stay. I've grown attached to that foot. I want to stay right where it's at. And so um, pray for me, if you would, during this surgery. Being diabetic, I heal slowly. And that has been the story of the last 14 months. And um, I... I don't know what to say except for I need your prayers and ask ask for that. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I may have to take a little different format. They're planning on putting a halo on my leg. I don't know that I can be able, be able to sit here at my desk. I may have to arrange something around the chair that I sit in most of the time uh, when my foot's propped up and I'm, I'm immobile. Uh, <clears throat> but I expect that I'll be back on here. Uh, I hope it will be weekly, just like it is now. As a matter of fact, I'm giving thought to increasing it to more than once a week. If you think that would be a good idea, if you've got time and you would like for that to happen, hello, Debbie, it's good to see you. God bless you. Um, if, um, uh, if you would like for this to be more than once a week, let me know. Uh, I, I have the opportunity to do that, uh, certainly. and uh, But I don't want to give you something you don't want so just let me know and we will um, we'll go from there I have we have continued to have services at the Pentecostals of Crosby I, I have I've not continued streaming that because we're able to come together as a church body and um, um, but, but but those of you who are not able to come to our uh, congregation uh, on Sundays perhaps you'd like for me to uh, to record that again and post it. If so, give me some feedback. I need to know uh, what you want, what you'd like to see, and I will try to accommodate you. The Lord called me to preach and to teach the Word of God. Um, I uh, I want to do that. I love to do that. I want to give you what you want and what will benefit you. So 
give me some feedback and uh, I'll be uh, very happy to accommodate uh, your desires. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you today for all that you are in my life, all that you have given me. I'm just very thankful. I ask that you move in my life and help me to be a more faithful man, a better husband, a better dad, a better grandfather, a better pastor, a better Christian, Lord, a better child of God. Draw me nearer to you. Give me better understanding. Help me to help others in their understanding. We pray these things in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, your hand upon the doctors as they do what they need to do to uh, work toward healing in my body. And, Lord, there are others that I know today. I know Terry still needs a touch from on high, and I ask you to move on him. And there are others. There are others who, Lord, may be uh, hearing this prayer, perhaps joining in that have needs that I don't know anything about. I ask you to move in those needs. Hear the hearts. We pray these things in Jesus' name, Lord, hear our prayer. We want to go uh, back into the article that we've been studying. And uh, if anyone does watch this video that uh, you don't have a copy of this article that we've, been, uh, that we've been going through pretty carefully, it was written in the early 1800s, uh, by a man named John Stock. Uh, he was a Baptist uh, minister. And uh, uh, although I'm Pentecostal, the Word of God is the Word of God. And he was putting forth uh, the truth of who Jesus is. And I, I found this to be very compelling. And I want it to be a blessing to you if you'd like to receive this. Private message me your, uh, your email address. And I will send you a copy of this through uh, through the email. Well, we want to uh, pick up where we left off last week. We, we're, we'll be on topic number 10 in this article, if you have the article to follow along. And it says, Jesus indirectly compared himself with God. Uh, uh, he he did so in, in these words. He said, No man knoweth the, uh, knoweth the Son. And Luke, it says, who the Son is but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, again in Luke it says who the Father is, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Now, uh, Jesus is saying that no one knows God but me. No one really knows me but God. Uh, he is putting himself on a level with with God as far as knowledge, depth of knowledge, breadth of knowledge, knowing uh, who the Father is, no, no one but Him. Now let's go ahead and look at these verses. Let's look at verse uh, 11, uh, 27 of, of Matthew chapter 11. Yeah, let, let's go there and read what it says. Now, I love this whole passage. But uh, verse 27 says, All things are delivered unto me, of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And then comes this beautiful passage that is one of my favorite in all of Scripture. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is immediately there uh, attached to where, uh, 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 where Jesus is saying that no one knows the Father but me. Nobody can know me except for the Father. And then he goes into coming to God. And in all that, he's saying, come unto me. Jesus is making claims that he is, he is God. Not some, uh, just some messenger, although he was certainly that. Uh, not just a, a prophet, although he certainly was that. Not just those things. Not just a man, although he was certainly a man. But he was more than that. He, the article uh, that we're following 
says the God is entitled to God, man. And in fact, he was. But he was more than just a man. He, he was a, a man who was sleeping with great confidence uh, in the boat when the disciples were going nuts and saying, what in the world's going on in the midst of this storm? Uh, Jesus, don't you even care that we perish? When Jesus got up and uh, he looked at what was going on around him, he spoke to the wind and he spoke to the waves like no other man can. He said, peace, be still. Well, the wind heard its master and had to be still. The waves heard their maker and had no choice but to obey. And where there had been a great storm, now I want you to hear this point, where there had been a great storm, now there was a great calm. This was immediately after the disciples who were close to Jesus came to him and said, we're in big trouble. Don't you care that we perish? Didn't say, don't you care that we get wet or that we're inconvenienced? Don't you care that we perish? If you have found that place in your life and you're wondering where's God in the midst of all this trouble, well, he's awake, he's alert, and he's not lost his power. And where there has been a great storm, my friend, at the words of Jesus, there will be a great calm. Well, praise God. Praise God. That's that's little extra for free. <laughs> so let me throw that in there for you. <clears throat> Jesus was more than just a man. He said, you need rest? Come to me. Uh, if you're weary, come to me. He didn't point to someone else. He said, here I am. All right. Well, let me, let's me let move on just a little bit here. No one knows the Father except for me. No one knows me except the Father. Let's read that parallel verse in Luke chapter 10, verse 22. Jesus speaking, All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knows who the Son is, but the Father, and who the Father is, but the Son. He, he to whom the Son will reveal him. Well, um, there is a, a, a oneness of essence between the, the God that is everywhere and at all times the God who stepped out on nothing and created everything. There's an essential oneness of identity between Almighty God and Jesus Christ himself. Nobody knows about that. Nobody really can, can understand the depths of that except for he himself. He's telling us who he is if we're listening. These statements are perhaps the most remarkable that fell even from the lips of Jesus. In them he asserted the Son to be as great a mystery as the Father and consequently as difficult to know. This was in effect claiming equality with God. Nothing less can be made of it. Then too, the Lord professed such a knowledge of God as can only be possessed by God he indeed asserted that he knew the Father as well as the Father knew him. Altogether, no language can well be more shockingly familiar and profane than these words of, of the Savior were. Understand that if he was not God, and he's making these claims, that he's just spouting blasphemy. But he's not, because he is who he says he is. If he were no more than a man, let the reader well uh, ponder them in the uh, version both of, of uh, Matthew and Luke. If he was not any more than just a man, 
and he was making assertions which were not really not good for him to make or not even appropriate for him to make on one occasion our Lord declared my father is greater than all that's John 10 29 let's read that right now John 10, verse uh, 29. My Father, which gave them uh, me, is greater than all, and no man is able to, to uh, pluck them out of my Father's hand. That uh, chapter 10 of John is an incredible passage of Scripture. Hello, Linda. It's great to see you. Uh, it's, it's loaded with identity of Jesus a deity of Jesus. He is the door. He is the great shepherd. Um, all these things are right here in, in chapter 10. I want you to read it when you get a chance. But this part where he talks about uh, the Father gave them to me, he's talking about his, his, the, his followers, his us, his sheep, were held in the Father's hand. But the Father gave them to Jesus. No man is able to pluck them out of God's hand. And then verse 30, oh, what a revelation. It says, I and my Father are one. Now, folks, that's as clear a statement as, as Jesus could have made. At, uh, deity, uh, no one could have spoken those words except for Jesus but he did and thank God he revealed himself to us Jesus people get the idea that he was hiding the fact that he was uh, God and he wasn't he was very plain spoken about who he was people just had to be listening and again the beauty of this and I accept him as the Almighty God I hope you do too not just a messenger, not just a, a part of God, but he was very God. He was God revealed in flesh. He was all that God is while being all that man is. And, and that's that unique identity is, is why we can know him so well. Because as a man, he suffered. As a man, he hungered. As a man, he knew weariness. I suspect he knew some discouragement at times, just like I do, and just like you do. But God Almighty, in the incarnation, felt what we feel. And so God understands when you're discouraged. He understands if you have reached the end of your rope. He understands if... The load is just getting too heavy and you can't, you just don't see how you can bear it anymore. Jesus knew all those things. He knew betrayal. He knew people who wanted to kill him and in fact did. He laid down his life for you and for me that he could wash our sins away. I'm glad I know who he is. Jesus was more than just a man. He was more than just a whipping boy. He was more than just somebody that, that uh, God in heaven said, go down and take your licks. Oh, no. God himself, he gave not only his only begotten son, but God gave himself. He stood in your place on Mount Calvary. Every sin you've ever done, Jesus faced that on Calvary, actually before then also, at the Garden of Gethsemane, and though it was repugnant to him, he who had done no sin, he became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, praise God. I and my Father are one. We can relate to God through Jesus himself. He is uh, the perfect prism. If you know a uh, prism... Light goes through a, a, a prism and on the other side all the shades of that light are revealed in all its glory and beauty and God shining through that prism of the humanity of Jesus Christ. That's how we see God. That's how we know God. 
But that prism works the other way too. Through that humanity, the flesh, the man, Christ Jesus, through his sufferings, God Almighty in an experiential way knows how I feel. He knows the burdens that we bear. He sees the full panoply of colors of the human soul by experience. Oh, what a God we serve. What a God we serve, my goodness. And I'm glad that I know that Jesus is, in fact, uh, uh, what we call the great high priest, the one that stands between us and God. That's that humanity. That's how God understands us. Well, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let me move on a little bit further. Actually, let's stay right here. There in John chapter 10. I'm getting ahead a little bit into the next subject, but I don't have enough time to really go into the entirety of the next subject, but I do want to deal with this. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Verse 31, Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of, the, of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Now, next week we'll deal with the remainder of this, this passage. But I want to deal with this for a few minutes. They had it all backwards. He, being a man, made himself God. That's what they saw. And because they had picked up stones, they were going to kill Jesus. They had it completely in reverse. He, being God, made himself man. That's the beauty of who Jesus is and why he came and the work of Jesus in our lives. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. I've talked about with this about you uh, with you before. I have two sons and a daughter, and I, I promise you, uh, I'm not giving them up for you. I, I'm not God. I, I don't. I don't have the heart that is is completely that of God. I, I'll be honest with you. I love my kids, and if it was you or them, it'd be you. I might give myself, but I'm not going to give up my kids. If you're a mother or a father, you can kind of understand that. But God so loved Linda, and he so loved Debbie, and he so loved Carrie, he so loved all of us that he sacrificed everything that was dear to him that you and I might be saved. What a God we serve. What a God, and I'm glad that I know who Jesus is and the depth and the width and the height of the love of God for me. Praise God. Well, let me take just a moment. Do you have any of you have any questions that I could uh, comment on before we close? I'm so glad you've joined me and I hope this has been a blessing to you. Folks, I just want to know more about Jesus. I just want to draw closer and closer to Jesus. My hope is in Him. My hope is in Jesus. Like you said, Linda, He is my everything. Both great and small. Yes, what a beautiful song those lyrics are from. He gave His life for me. Made everything new. He is my everything. How about you? 
Lord, we come with thankfulness that you have revealed yourself unto us. Help me to study to show myself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Help me to draw nearer to you. Lord, I'm a man who is full of fallacies. I have faults. <laughs> I don't see how a human being can have any more faults than I do. But I do, and I face up to them, and I bring them to Calvary. I ask you to forgive me, Lord, of all the weaknesses and failings that that I have participate in. Every bad choice. Please let the blood of Jesus Christ cover me once again. And make me new and clean and fresh. And set me on the right path. I pray for Debbie today. Your hand upon her. Lord, I pray your hand upon her husband and upon all that she loves. She's got parts of her heart that are broken and will be broken forever. I ask you to let the Holy Ghost give her a soothing comfort and help at every time of distress and of pain. Lord, I pray for Linda, for your hand upon her her family. Lord, bless them. Bless them richly. Bless them in every phase of their life. And help me, Lord. I pray for the church, not just the church in Crosby, but the church all around the world. Let us be a force for good. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, I'll be back again next Wednesday. Again, if you would like to have this Bible study more frequently than once a week, if you'll let me know, leave a, mess leave a, uh, uh, leave a message here, and uh, we'll see what we can do about making that, uh, making that happen. Pray for us, and I'm praying for you. God bless you.